All right, so this is demo part two uh, for dimensioning. I'm going to show you some things that I didn't explain last time. Uh, first thing I want to start with is going through center arcs and center lines because this is something that you didn't have to do on your last assignment. Uh, so what you should have submitted already or completed is your drawings one to six, these ones. Um, and once these are done uh, and handed in, you're going to be starting drawing your uh, drawings 13 and 14. So I have 13 here and 14 here. And you're just going to draw them as you see them. There are some dimensioning errors on the page, so you're going to have to use your critical thinking skills and, and figure out what the dimension should be. Uh, but here's drawing 13 done. Um, and as you can see, there's hidden lines on here, but what we're missing are these things called center marks and center lines. So I'll show you how to get started with those. Um, so I've got my layout here. Uh, my title block's been updated. My notes are on here. What I need to do is I need to start setting up my scale. So in the past, we've used scale 1 to 3. Um, and as you can see, that's much too uh, large. So maybe we'll try like 1 to, I don't know, what's 1 to 1 and a half. I bet we could even go one to one. Let's try that. Yeah, one to one works great. So here I've got one of my views on here. Uh, you know what? I'm going to start with something a little bit more complicated. We'll start with this one. This is one to one. So I've got uh, so a hole here that goes through the object. Um, and when you have a hole, you need to put center marks and center lines. So to do that, you want to be in your um, uh, center layer. So this is different than you've done in the past. You're not in the dimension layer, you're in the center layer. And then on your annotate tab, uh, there are a couple of symbols here that you're going to want to kind of check out. Uh, here, it has its own little, little section for center mark and center line. It's right next to your dimension panel. Um, so first all we're going to use is center mark. And all you do, you're in your center layer, and you click center mark, and you click the circle. And what it's going to do is it's going to put a plus on the circle. So what that's indicating is it's indicating that's the center of a hole. So anytime that there's a hole in an object, something that goes all the way through or part way through, you need to put a center mark on it. And then similarly, um, these hidden lines here aren't in indicating an edge. They're indicating that there's a hole that goes to this object. So when you're looking at a hole from a side view, you need to put a center line. So you do that by clicking center line. Um, and what you do is you click the two side lines. And then the computer will generate a center line through the middle. So I'm going to do that again with center line. And then the computer will put a center line through the middle. So it's, it's quite simple. Um, all you have to do is know where the function is. It's in the annotate tab. Um, but center marks and center lines are specifically for holes. So when the object has a hole, you need to make sure from the top view, not necessarily the top view of the object, but the top view of the hole, where it looks like a circle. It needs to have that plus. It needs to have that center mark. And the side view of the hole needs to have a center line through it. Are there any questions at this point about center marks or center lines? So the next thing we need to do um, in this drawing, uh, your dimensions are given to two decimal places. And our computer is still set up, I believe, to have one or no decimal places because it was our drawing 1 to 6 was like 12, 4, not 12.5, that kind of thing. So we're going to go into our DIM style manager. We're going to make sure that uh, everything's set up properly. Um, so in here, in uh, primary units, you want to make sure that your precision is set to two decimal places. It should have been set to just zero. But we want to change that to two decimal places um, because we want the assignment that we dimension to have the same precisions as the dimensions given. So we've changed that. Uh, and now I'm going to go into my uh, dimension layer. So we're going to trade up to the dimension layer. Go away. There we go. Um, and a couple changes, I guess, with, with dimensioning. So a couple symbols that I want to mention and a couple rule breaks that you can do. So um, the couple of symbols that I'm going to talk about, uh, one of them is SYM and the other one is TYP. So these are symbols that you can add to dimensions that are going to simplify your life. So uh, the first one being SYM means it's short for symmetrical. And then TYP is short for typical. So I'll put those on here. Oh, where did my text box go? There we go. So SYM is uh, symmetrical. And then TYP is for typical. Now here's kind of the rule with this. 
Uh, symmetrical is a symbol that you can use where your object has symmetry. It's the same on one side as it is on the other. Um, so when your object has symmetry, this is something that's used for uh, distances uh, and I guess like length measurements. Typical is where something is the same somewhere else in the drawing. So if it's the same, um, this would be something that would be used for fillet, something for radius, um, for diameter of circle. Ooh, I'm running out of text box. Um, for a diameter, uh, maybe a chamfer, this kind of thing. So these are our features. Typical is used for features on an object, and symmetrical is used for like distances, measurements, and lengths or length, length me measurements. So an example on this assignment would be, uh, let's start dimensioning this like we would normally. So we're going to dimension like overall length, uh, and then I'm going to dimension overall height, uh, and overall width I'll put here between this and the notes. Okay, so I've got overall length, overall width, overall height. Now I've got to add in some of the features. So one example where you might want to use SYM right, that's where we're using for a, a measurement, is here. So this measurement here is the same as this measurement here on this object. In fact, the object is symmetri symmetrical. So this side of the object is the same as this side of the object. It's almost mirrored. So what I would do is I would put this dimension here. So to dimension this object correctly, I would either have to put it on two times like this, or I could make this more eloquent by double clicking in here and adding Oh, I don't want you to, don't clear, there we go, and adding SYM. So what, if I add SYM to this, I can delete this one. So now that's made my assignment more eloquent because I've got to take one more dimension off the assignment by adding a, a symbol. Um, TYP is really, really helpful if you have like four holes in the object and all of them have the same diameter. You only have to dimension one of them. Give me the diameter and then tell me it's TYP and then you don't have to dimension the other ones and it saves you a lot of time. Um, other things that we need to keep in mind when we're dimensioning is the person making this object needs to know where the center of the hole is located. And to do that, we're going to have to break some rules. right? To dimension to the center of the hole here, we could do that but it would cut right through the object. So another way to do it would be putting it here but then we're dimensioning to like, you know, technically a center line or a hidden line. which isn't, is frowned upon. So sometimes you're going to have to break the rules and when you have to break the rules uh, it's going to go like this. So the first rule that you can break, so if you're going to break the rules, the first rule you're going to break is uh, putting a dimension between the object and the border. Uh, the second rule if you need to break it uh, would be this one which is putting uh, dimensions to a hidden line. And then the third rule, if you're going to break like this, would be uh, dimensioning through uh, or inside an object. And then I'll just color code them so it's like more clear. So if we do this, uh, this would be kind of like green means go. Uh, if you have to, this would be not so bad to break. Hidden line would be like yellow. Proceed with caution. Try not to break this rule. And then through or inside an object would be like red. We don't want to we really don't want to break this rule. So if these are kind of the three, oh this one you can hardly see. Object and border, your hidden line, or through or inside an object. Maybe we'll change this to like orange so you can see it. That's orange, there. That works. Um, now, the other thing to consider is I would break object and border and hidden line, both of these, before dimensioning through an object. So like I would put, I would put a dimension down here to a hidden line before I would dimension inside or through an object. So that's something to consider. Sometimes you're going to have to break the rules, and when you break the rules, you want to think about it in this order, right? Dimensioning between the object and, and, and the border first, dimensioning to a hidden line or both, uh, and then lastly, through or inside an object. So those are things you want to consider. Uh, but what I was saying with the, the hole is you want to tell the person making this object, you want to tell them like where the hole is located, where the center is located. If you've ever taken woodwork or metalwork, which you should have in grade 8, you should have done a little bit of stuff, you lay out the hole from the center. So that means that you measure the hole to the center to lay it out. So I've given here this where the center of the hole is located in X, but I also need to tell the person making this where the center of the hole is located in Y. Now I could do that here. I could click from here to the center of the object and pull out 
why shouldn't I do that though? Like why, why should I avoid doing this? What is incorrect about this? Just put up your hand if you know. Why should I not put the dimension here? We just kind of talked about it. Are we too sleepy this morning? Because, pardon me? It goes through the object. This goes through the object. Right, so we want to try to avoid doing this. So I'm going to delete this. Um, and I, what I would do is I would probably put it here. I would dimension, oops. I would dimension from here, from the center to like the edge. Like this would make more sense because it, it gives you the same information. It's the same information. It's just presented in a different view. Now, if you absolutely can't avoid it and you have to dimension through an object, um, I would recommend you do something like this. You dimension to the object and then what you can do is you can grab this grip point and you can just pull it to the outside of the object. So if you have to dimension through an object, what you'll want to do is grab, grab the grip point and pull it through. Now this isn't a really formally correct way of dimensioning because you're not actually dimensioning to any object, um, but this would be what we considered an er inferred dimension. But if you have to, there's like no possible way that you can avoid doing this, um, I would do that. I would pull, pull the dimension through the object. Now sometimes you're going to have to dimension inside an object. There's really no other way and that's going to have to be okay, right? There's, there's really no other way to do it, so you have to go with that. Um, so I went through center mark, center lines, uh, changing your dim style. I talked about using SYM and TYP. Um, and then I also talked about when you have to break the rules of dimensioning. Uh, so that's pretty much it for the second part of the dimensioning uh, demonstration. Are there any other questions? All right, that's it. Get to work.